Hey everybody and happy Friday. It is the day we're all by Venus. So time for my satsang on love. And today I'm going to be speaking about um, the art of friendship. You know, our friends are those who are there for us even when, you know, our primary intimate relationships break down. So we really do need to invest in our friendships because they're often there for the long haul. And, you know, like the Beatles song, Little Help From My Friends, you know, I know I couldn't have gotten through my tough times without friends. So, you know, what is it that makes a good friend? And for me, it's about who shows up. Yeah, when it counts, when the stakes are high. And for me, that's um, my milestones okay so who's there to be a part of those momentous times those threshold crossings those crossroads um, to bear witness and to uh, celebrate how far I've come and and what I'm stepping into these are times of transition and transition is when we're vulnerable um, and so who's there for us in times of vulnerability, times of crisis, maybe that's moving house, you know, um, the highlights and lowlights, um, who makes it a priority to, to show up and share in your crossroads times. And in our modern world, we don't receive any training on what it is to be a true friend or how to recognize one. But friendships are essential to our well-being and to our survival, particularly emotionally and psychologically. And given how prevalent anxiety and depression is, I think there's never been a greater time to um, have some reflections around what it is that makes a good friend. For me, um, you know, a good friend is someone where you can pick up where you're left off. In other words, they're not going to, lay a guilt trip on you if you've missed their birthday. Even though I said, you know, milestones are very important, I'm often terrible at remembering dates, particularly having been nomadic the last two years and relying on a digital calendar rather than a, a material physical diary. So, um, you know, to understand that sometimes life gets in the way, but um, to be able to just... Uh, immediately appreciate the gift that you are in each other's lives. But really it's about monitoring how we feel when we're around someone, when we have interactions, when we receive a message from them. You know, is this someone that elicits positive feelings or negative feelings? Um, and the more immature someone is, the more self-centered they are, um, and so the less that they're considerate of the thoughts and feelings of others, how their behavior impacts others. And so there are three qualities for me that indicate maturity. And this is why my sort of um, yardstick for measuring whether or not someone is um you know, capable of being a good friend if they have capacity. And the first is reciprocity, like the infinity sign, you know, or the figure eight. This is our ability to give and take, okay? Not to be somebody who's always on the take, looking at what they can get from us, a fair weather friend, but somebody who meets us halfway. Um, and we can discern that by someone's ability to listen you know having sat in circle sharing circles for many years you develop the ability to listen and I know when I started facilitating men's circles I noticed a marked difference between women's ability to hold space and listen for each other and men because the masculine polarity is active and the feminine polarity is receptive um, those with more feminine energy, which isn't always uh, women, um, are better at holding space, better at listening. And I went out to dinner with a girlfriend last night and she commented on how much she appreciated that I had that ability to 
um, to listen and hold space and that a lot of her um, friends didn't. And, you know, for me, if someone doesn't have a practice of sitting in circle, um, that's usually a bit of a flag for me. It's like, mm, you know, are they going to be able to do reciprocity? Um, or is it, you know, like a child who unconsciously projects surrogate parent onto another and uses them as a sounding board to process by talking incessantly at them stream of consciousness and you come away feeling drained and I know I've spoken that to a few people in the past and just pointed it out and said hey look I've just listened to you for 90 minutes and you haven't asked me a single question about myself so you know I'm feeling drained and, you know, that can be really affronting when you point out someone's unconscious shadow behavior like that. But, you know, life's too short to to not be 100% transparent and authentic. So if we don't have reciprocity, what we have is the dynamic of parent-child, and this isn't sustainable. The second quality which indicates maturity is humility. Will you bow your ego and acknowledge when you've made a mistake, when you've done something which, you know, wasn't considered, wasn't your best choice, it was an error in judgment? Because if we can't, then, um, you know, this isn't somebody that I personally would choose to be around. Humility is um, something I greatly value because if somebody is ego dominant, then, um, you know, they're going to be oblivious to the impact that their thoughts and words are having on me. Finally, integrity. Now, what is integrity? It's when our words and our actions align. So if somebody promises you the world or constantly makes um, agreements and then breaks those agreements, yeah, whether it's to meet or to do something and they don't honour their word, yeah, they don't honour that your word is your bond, then that is a flag that they don't have integrity and integrity is another hallmark of maturity when we're young we often fall for people that are charming and promise us what it is we want to hear and then only through the measure of time the fullness of time do we kind of begin to see oh this is somebody whose word actually means nothing so <clears throat> this is why you know the saying Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. It takes time to observe somebody's actions and to see whether or not they are worthy of your trust. And if they don't have personal integrity, then we don't trust them just because we want to trust them. So for me, this is about a clear code of conduct, what's acceptable to us, what isn't. And if we don't have that code of conduct, you know, it's about, you know, like the chivalrous knights and things for ourselves, how can we uphold a sacred space for ourselves, knowing that our time and our energy and our hearts are precious? Um, and, you know, when we do have a code of conduct, we have a yardstick, something to hold people to account when they're not accountable to themselves or others. So, you know, nowadays the term friend is, is used for acquaintances. You know, we talk about Facebook friends and you can have thousands of Facebook friends and never have even met these people. Now, that is not a friend, okay? An acquaintance is somebody who you might know their name, you might see them down the street, but this is not somebody who you would trust to bear your vulnerability to. Okay, someone that you could trust wouldn't shame you or wouldn't uh, opt out if you were really in need. You know, like the saying, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Now, the word indeed can be broken up into in deed, deed being in action. Will they show up physically 
or is it somebody who again is um giving you a false a false uh, belief that they're there for you and they're not so at the end of the day actions speak louder than words and it takes time it takes time to find people that we are aligned with that we share values with that um lift us up okay that mutually we walk away feeling like our cup has been filled that our heart is nourished that we are truly seen heard and understood and that for me is what you know a true friend is it doesn't mean that you're locked at the hip and you speak to each other every day on the phone it's not about quantity it's about quality and also you know it's about being loyal okay not fickle when someone is fickle it's like they've got puppy brain they're always easily distracted by oh that looks better over there you know like the saying the grass is greener I know I had a partner years ago and he was a Gemini and Gemini being the youngest of the three air signs is easily distracted. Um, and, you know, I had this romantic picnic planned with lobster and Moe Chandon and, you know, he saw a, a party further up the beach. It was New Year's Eve for the, the 2000 and we were on an island together. And He just wanted to go and join the party. And that for me, that was the death knell of the relationship. So is it someone who can be truly present, knowing that your presence is your gift or are they easily distracted by, you know, what's going on over there? But loyalty is something, it's a quality. We can't be loyal to others if we haven't learned how to be loyal to ourselves. In other words, if we hang our devotional heart onto another human being, we'll become hopelessly devoted to them, blindly loyal to them, and we will self-sacrifice our own needs because we've put them on a pedestal. And so, you know, I'm born near the dog and the medicine, the totemic ally medicine of dog is friendship, loyalty, learning to be your own best friend. So, um, you know, when I see people with dogs, I often think, they're learning what loyalty is. They're learning what it is to be a good friend. And they, that dog companion is helping to heal their heart from betrayal, from those who were disloyal. So, um, you know, often we will trust an animal when we no longer have a, a trust in humans if we've been traumatized and this is uh shadow pan the archetype of the wild man who hangs out in the wild places and his friends are animals because he's retreated from the human world so animals are a wonderful uh companion a healing ally but at the end of the day they come into our life to show us how to be a good friend to ourselves not that we you know, seclude ourselves away and spend all of our time only with an animal rather than daring to open our heart to trust friends by trusting ourselves to discern, to see who is worthy of our trust and who isn't. So um, we have to develop that animalistic sense to be able to smell out, use our instincts, our gut, to smell out who is a false friend, who is not, um, you know, their words and actions don't align because the body doesn't lie, you know, like the saying, it smells fishy. Like, you know, we, we, we've been conditioned to become more and more uh, not a friend to our body. Okay. You know, this, this idea that, um, we should all be plant-based, you know, that's not necessarily true. If you have an O positive blood line, you know, what your ancestors ate was meat and that you may not feel deep satisfaction, um, you know, fulfilled and have the energy you need. If you don't have meat protein in your diet, 
or if you're very, very sick, you might need bone broth soup to repair your gut. And when we impose an ideology onto the body, you know, that's us not being a good friend to our bodies, okay? Or, you know, the same with, say, an eating disorder or, or um, somebody that overtrains because they're imposing an ideology of a perfectionistic ideal onto their body. So first we have to learn how to be a good friend to ourselves on the understanding that, you know, our bodies are working for us 24-7 and we need to listen to the intelligence of the body and honor our bodies um, and understand that the needs of our bodies change in each life chapter as well as depending where we are, what climate, what season, you know, it might be fine to eat raw foods in the hotter months or if you're living close, close to the equator, but not if you're living closer to the poles where it gets cold. So just like in the uh, story of the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy has Toto that represents her instinctual self. This is like the archetypal fool in the tarot who has the dog next to them. We need to befriend our instincts and use our instincts as a navigational guide in life to discern who is worthy of our trust and go with our gut. So we don't get taken in by those who seek to cast a, gamma, a glamour and impress us with their, um, you know, their, their silver tongue with their words or with their looks. So, um, yeah, I hope that's good food for thought on this Friday in Scorpio where we are discerning whose, uh, whose shadow is, um, you know, being acknowledged and therefore is worthy of trust and those whose shadow is completely unconscious um, and who are not trustworthy, even if we want to trust them. So blessings on your weekend. For those of you um, in the UK, I'm doing events in Glastonbury this weekend. I'll put the link in the description. Would love you to join me. And um, um, yeah, you can check out all the info on the link. But it's uh, events for men and women, and I'll be in Lewis next weekend. So um, if you're interested in finding out more, click the link below. And thanks so much for watching.